Back at the stand, Sheriff Center. Look at those first two sets. The Flyers of Lewis winning 25-21 and 25-11. They went into the intermission. They went into their locker room. And Charlie Wade and Jeff Hall and the other coaches. And Vernon Podluski. Vernon Podluski <laughs> and Malia Labar and everybody else who plays a role. And you know what? The players. Maybe it was one of the players that stepped up and said, it's time. And somebody like her, speaking Robin of players, Santos. a former Wahine, All-American, and Olympian. She's not about to leave, but here we are. The Warriors rally back, and of course, the former assistant coach as well for you the know, men. You know, I think Pavlowski probably did say something in the locker room. He probably just took Nick Costello aside and said, hey, let's take some more balls. Nick has been fantastic, great, great passing, and he's got 11 digs to lead all players on the floor. We talked about how Charlie Wade would be happy to see his team rally back and take that third set. He'd be very happy to get even at two and two. But now, now. This is all yeah, gravy now, no. isn't it? But yes, but no, because now you got to finish, Yeah. right? Are you going to be happy if you don't finish? Well, they won the toss. They, they chose to receive. And you were talking about a little bit of gamesmanship. If you were the head coach, Dan Friend, you would have said, okay, let's flip flop now so that Hawaii ends because they switch halfway through. Then they would have wound up back where they are on their not They, they would end up bench. on the visiting bench. Right. So now Hawaii gets to finish the last half of this rally scoring on their home bench. So you might feel a little more comfortable that way, but. Uh, well, anybody who's watching probably doesn't need an explanation, but very simple. First one to 15, got to win by two. And they switch at eight. You get down by any more than one in rally scoring in a fifth set, you start to really feel the squeeze, don't you? It's take two and a half hours now to play four sets. And it's going to take about 11 minutes to play <laughs> the last set because of the abbreviated 15-point format. So B.J. Bulldog takes a deep breath and serves it over. And here we go, setting it up. Off the block is Hutt, an opportunity to set it up. Hawaii and Costello cannot get his hands on it. And he knew they were going to go to Jay Petty. They're going to go to him a lot this set, I, is my estimation. I, I think that Hawaii's just got to dedicate more blockers to him, if possible. Petty with 20 kills now on the night. Bulldog floats it back over once again. Hunt this time manages to put it down for the kill. We're tied at one all. In the fifth set, you always look to see who's going to get that first natural point. Back to back side out. Brooks the door. Back to serve for Hawaii. Oh, high toss. Off the tape. Handled nicely by Barney. Off the block. Good job by J.P. Marks to keep it alive. Stephen Hunt off the block and down. And Hawaii gets the first natural point to this fifth set. Stephen Hunt with three blockers. He's seen a lot of blockers, multiple blockers tonight. He'll continue to see them all year long. He's got to continue to have lots of shots to beat those big blocks. And that was off the hands of Petty. Hawaii two serving one. Once again, Brooks Ador. Second time in a row off the tape. Overpass and Hunt dunks it down and somehow they managed to get it back. This time off the block and another opportunity. And hitting it and just catching it inside the corner. Are you kidding me? Is Petty for his 21st kill. Charlie Wade saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Charlie having a pretty deep conversation with the down official over there. And I don't, whatever it is, he's not going to get it translated to the up official. Boy, Stephen Hunt, kind of a two-hand dunk straight down and looked like Hawaii was going to win that point. That's and what the discussion was about. They thought that the, the two-hand dunk down was on 
you know, a uh, on the setter who was up there, who would have been an illegal blocker. So Petty now with the serve, and Marks comes flying over, and Hunt blocked that time by Carbonier. Cross court swing. Another little move at the net, managing to get it over is Nick West. And Costello gets one hand up. He can't put the pass up. And that's a point for Lewis. His early points in the fifth set are crucial. And if I were uh, Charlie Wade, I would not let this Lewis team get any more than two points up before I call my first timeout. I call an early timeout because Lewis clearly is very emotional right now. They, they did not like losing those first two sets, and now they're, they're playing with a little bit of extra energy. They, remember, they've played other five-set matches already. They played a five-setter against Pepperdine. Uh, they had a four-setter against UCLA, another four-setter against Pepperdine. So they're used to a long night. And Hawaii, For Hawaii, they've had all three setters. Then three and out, twice, two of them. They won, one they lost. And then another one they won last night against Springfield. Yep. So Lewis, three serving two. Jay Petty, what a night he has had. 21 kills, good serve handled by J.P. Marks. Once again, they're going to go to Hunt, and it's thrown right back into the Hawaii side of the court. Huge block by Matt Gallant. What a set by Buscaro on a bad pass. He goes over, sets from his knees. Hunt really has nowhere to go. It's three-man block. Very difficult. He could have soft hit it into the block and hoped for a cover, but uh, chose not to. Petty this time floats it over softly. And Nick West out of the middle, unable to put it down. Overpass, Averill can't do anything with it. Back to Stephen Hunt. Another overpass, and this time Nick West takes care of business. Now the discussion is Dan Friends saying there was a, a violation, an under, a, a center line violation. Doesn't get uh, the agreement from Burt Fuller. Setting it up and putting it down. And once again, it's Matt Gallick. And Gallick is coming up big with a couple of kills and a block here in this rally scoring fifth set. 5-3 Lewis. And served by Averill just a little bit too easy. And Lewis able to run. Quick attack off that perfect pass. West didn't get a good swing at that one. Oh, what a good swing that time by Ian Carbonier, the left-hander. Hawaii down by three. And all eyes look to Charlie Wade to see if he's going to call a timeout. I think he's got to call a timeout here. And he is. He's going to call the timeout. Hawaii trailing 6-3. In the fifth set, the first time they've gone five all year. We'll be back with more from the Stanley. Back at the Stan Sheriff Center, and we are in a dog fight with the Flyers of Lewis, Hawaii. Extending this match to a fifth set after being down love two. They need a side out. They're going to get it right there. Service error out of the timeout. Point Warriors. And Hawaii back within two. Stephen Hunt back to serve for Hawaii. Hunt last night, 16 kills. He's come back with 14 tonight. Nick West has 10. JP marks a dozen. Hawaii hitting 145. Lewis hitting 333. Easy touch put back over by Marks. Another block by West. But Carbonier with the soft touch put back over by Marks. And then Harrison Phillips in his libero for the moment and unable to handle it. Phelps out back into the match for Hawaii. Nick Costello and Hawaii once again down by three. It'll be seven serving four. Carbonier to serve it up. Back to Marks, and he was in really good position, almost got away with it. Off the block, opportunity for Hawaii to set it up. And then Marks off the block, and that's a big point and a big swing for JP. Boy, Hawaii got away with one there because their first pass was not good. It was advantage Lewis in that whole rally until 
Costello puts up a perfect pass in a one-on-one -on -one situation on the outside for Hawaii as J.P. Marks converts. So Nick West to serve for Hawaii. Gets it in. Off the block, saved by Hunt. And swinging and hitting it long is Marks. And another side out and another point. And they're going to switch sides as we hit the eight mark. Eight, five. And the Flyers with the advantage as the two teams switch sides. You know, psychologically, <laughs> there's a, clearly an advantage for the team that reaches eight first. They get to glow a little bit as they switch sides, but I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the team that's down on the switch come back to win. We'll and see I if kinda, Hawaii can pull that off. And I kind of chuckled because as he reached down to get his briefcase and head to the other side, the Flyers head coach, Dan Friend, was about three feet away, and he just rolled his eyes and smiled as if to say, oh, how did this what a happen? Night. How did this happen? We're sneaking up on three <laughs> hours here. I'll tell you what, the fans in attendance, no question, getting their money's worth tonight. They'll be a lot happier if the Warriors can walk out of this arena victorious. It's like Greg Petty, who has had some good serving runs tonight, is going to serve here. Puts it in. Hawaii setting it up. J.P. Marks off the block. Opportunity for the Flyers. Little joust at the net. Off the block. As Taylor Averill couldn't put it down. From the back row. And it's in. And it falls right between Steve Hunt and Taylor Averill. And that was the left-hander, Carbonier. And now the Flyers are up by four as this one comes right into your living room. Carbonier was a huge factor in the first two sets, kind of quiet in the second two sets, now coming on strong in the third set, as is Petty. Make that both Petties. Setting it up for Marks. Squeezes it in and then misplayed by B.J. Bulldog. So Marks with the kill, Hawaii back in within three. And coming back in is... Harrison Phelps for Nick Costello. Again, that new rule that allows the team to have two Liberos that can replace one another. Back to serve is Sam Biscaro, and he serves it into the net and grimaces as he does so. 10 to 6. And Rowley scoring to 15. You get to double figures with a four point advantage. You got to be feeling pretty good. But what needs to put together a little mini rally here. Stephen Hunt, he powers it down. And Hunt with his 15th kill of the match. And the Warriors back within three. It'll be seven serving 10. Oh, Hawaii has shown some guts tonight, some great courage. Regardless of what happens, no matter should Hawaii come back to win or not, so much will be gained from a match like this tonight, Chris. Yeah, they've been the underdog, you know, the 13th team, ranked team in the country versus the ninth team in the country. Marks gets the serve in, out of the back row. Hawaii with an opportunity. Hunt kind of floats up there off the block. Point Hawaii. That may have been his smartest, best hit tonight as far as being having facing two blockers up there. Well-formed block, well-executed block. And he just, in my opinion, outsmarted him by picking another shot, which is the high hand shot right there, picks up a touch on Matt Gallick. Kind of Jordan-esque in the way he hung up there and just waited to make his decision. Oh, going absolutely vertical is Matt Gallick. Had that one set up in the 6-6. Six -six. Sean Carney was talking earlier in the, the pregame show, and I think at halftime as well, about the versatility and the athleticism of the smallish Matt Gallick at 6'6". He's not your giant 6'8", 6'9", middle blocker. He's at 6'6", and he's agile. Hawaii needs points. Hunt blocked. Opportunity for the Flyers. And once again, it is Jay Penny who puts it down and timeout called by Charlie Wayne. We too 
will take a timeout. The Flyers three points away from winning this one in five. How much more magic do the Warriors have? Now it is to say crunch time would be probably a little bit of an understatement at this point. Hawaii. They need to get a side out and then they need to string together a couple of natural points. Hawaii trailing by four. Stephen Hunt off the block and manages to put it down in front of a diving Eric Barney. Okay, so they got the side out, Chris. Now they gotta get a couple of natural points. Jared Lofi turns to Nick West as he comes in and says, I want one block out of you right now. And that's what Hawaii needs. Hawaii needs a, either a transition play and with a great dig or a great block up front. Either one will do. Lofi back to serve. Nine serving, 12 floats it over. There's the block. Stephen Hunt. Well, you wanted the block. You got it. Huge play at the perfect time. And again, one blocker only on the guy who has been the go-to guy all night long, Jay Petty. Lofi again floats it over. Right down the middle, and again, the big arm of Matt Gallick. And Gallick, if it's not Petty, Gallick has really been holding this team up strong, and he has come up big in this fifth set. How about this guy walking on four years ago? He says, I'll come play for free. I just want to play volleyball. Now he's a scholarship guy and all conference two times. 13-10, that one's out of here. Sells it way long. Well, you can tell the adrenaline is pumping. And look who's coming into the game for the first time. I was about to say, we haven't seen Johan Timmer since early in the third set. He's been sitting for about a struggling hour. Off, yeah, yep. struggling, yeah, exactly. Struggling offensively, but he's got a great serve. Let's see if he can pull it off after being cold. Just needs to get this one in. He's looking up, almost as if he's looking up at himself on the big board as it gets quiet. Off the tape. Goes down. And they're going to set it to Carbonier, who goes cross court for the winner. And now one point away, the Flyers from a little town just outside Chicago. They've been to this tournament five times, so they're no strangers. Carbonier with four kills this set. That's like almost half of his production tonight. And Petty with three kills, so set out, half their points have come from two guys. James Hoffman, seldom used tonight, gets it in. Stephen Hunt off the block, it's off Stephen Hunt, and out point flyers, and that is it. The match is over. Hawaii fights back valiantly, but in the end, the Warriors come up short. 15 to 11 in this final set. Oh, how close the Warriors came to doing something so very, very special tonight. Charlie Wade closes the book on this one for now, but I'm sure there will be much to be gleaned from this match. I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it, it, there's a lot that the players learn tonight about themselves, and uh, this match is going to go a long way toward making this team better. No question about it. And it's not going to get any easier for the Warriors because tomorrow they meet a little team out of Westwood. <laughs> Third best team in the country, so say the Polsters. And the Bruins have uh, rolled through this tournament so far, beating 3-1 and then beating Springfield this afternoon 3-0. And Hawaii and its appreciative fans showing some aloha and offering some applause and well deserved for the Warriors. Who, as I said, fought back valiantly down two sets to none. They came back to take that third set 25 16 and then battled in the fourth set 25 13 before falling in five. But a great match and a great effort by the Warriors and head coach Charlie Wade now standing by with our Dan Devone.
All right, Howie, thanks so much. Well, Coach, it's never easy to lose, but you have to be proud of the way this young team battled back. Yeah, you know, uh, games one and two. Actually, game one, we are kind of rolling there, you know. We had a little cushion, and then we ended up, you know, kind of pushing a little bit, hit a few balls out of bounds, and uh, and clearly the uh, proverbial wheels came off the wagon, and game two was, uh, you know, really disappointing. But, uh, no, it absolutely rebounded, uh, played well in games three and four, and, uh you know, I think we evolved, you know, and that's for us, a young team. We're just trying to get better and, uh, you know, proud of the guys for getting out there and battling. Will this help in terms of the learning process? And we always talk about the maturation process with this young team in terms of what you'll have to deal with down the road. Well, you hope. You know, if we had just rolled over in game three, that would have been a real setback. But uh, came out and battled and, uh, you know, just didn't really get going in game five too much. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's ob absolutely uh, – you know, the way the match finished was a lot better than it was going the first hour we were here tonight. An emotional five sets, but now you don't have a lot of time to think about it because here come the Bruins. Yeah, I just, you know, thrilled to get a chance to play them. You know, this team needs to get on the court and play as much as possible. And, uh, you know, playing a quality opponent like UCLA is uh, something we need. Coach, your little guy's behind you need you. It's time to be dad for a little while. Right on, man. Thanks. <laughs> right, thanks so much, Coach. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Howard, it's back over to you. All righty, thank you very much. Thanks to Coach Wade. Uh, couldn't have said it better. Great effort. Unfortunately, coming up a little bit short in five. We'll be back with more, everybody. Stick around. A recap to follow. Back at the Sand Sheriff Center, the Warriors going over to visit the Antis to get their lay, as they do after every match. But not exactly happy as they drop it in five. But again, the Warriors... They're going to learn something from this one, and they should be very proud of their effort. Meanwhile, an opportunity for us to talk about our Bank of Hawaii players of the match. You see, uh, obviously, Jay Petty, what a night he had. 22 kills, ends up hitting uh, 289, but he was hitting, uh, you know, well over 500 most of the night. Uh, also picked up six digs, and he was just their go-to guy. I mean, whenever they needed a kill, he was the man. Uh, it was really fun watching him play, and I think he'll be, he may be the, the most valuable player on the MIVA this year if he keeps playing the way he played tonight. And for Hawaii, Nick West, 10 kills, hit 444, four blocks. The serve's coming back, he's playing better, and he is uh, one of those guys that uh, really keeps this team upbeat. A lot of personality, and you're going to have an opportunity if you haven't heard from him directly to hear from Nick West. We're going to be talking to him in the post-game show. Uh, pretty much wraps it up for us. Hawaii, unfortunately, falling in five, Chris, but you take so much away from this set, and, and certainly you may not be able to do it tonight because you got UCLA tomorrow, but maybe come Sunday and Monday and Tuesday when you have an opportunity to really sit back and kind of digest the whole thing. This is one of those matches that you really sit back and, and you're going to be able to take a lot of really good parts out of it if you're the Warriors. I totally agree. The passing was better. Serving was better. Um, their, their fortitude to come back and bounce back from adversity after losing 25-11. Tough to lose 25-11 and come back like that, and they did. They all dug in, started hitting smarter, passing better, serving better. Uh, Bascaro, I, th I thought, set his best match of the year. I uh, made some really good choices and, and gave uh, players sets that they like to hit. And uh, that guy right there, J.P. Marks, came up big tonight in many ways. I loved his blocking. He passed pretty good all night. It wasn't a great night for him passing, but he passed pretty good. And, uh, and he came up with some huge kills, especially that one to, to one set number four. All right. Well, that does it for us. Chris, thank you very much. We're going to send it to... Dan Devone and the guys on the side. Stick around, everybody. Warrior. Volleyball reaction coming up next. You'll hear from Nick West in the postgame show. For Chris McLaughlin, Howard Dushevsky, we say aloha, but we're not going away. More to come after the break. Okay.